hey robe what's up or whatever this kind of clothing is it's the culture detective here investigating your favorite movies <laughs> and today i'm going to be reviewing first cow so i saw the movie yesterday two hours and two minutes long first cow and it is a new movie from the one and only indie movie production company A24, which is in all of the movie discussions nowadays. And, you know, I myself have been a huge fan of A24 movies. I mean, they had come up with amazing movies like Moonlight, The Lighthouse, Hereditary, uh, the Disaster Artist, the list goes on. And this is another indie art film. And it is directed by Kelly Reichardt, whose work I'm not familiar with at all. This is pretty much her first film. And the plot of this movie is basically in the 1820s. A man by the name of Otis Figowitz, whose nickname is Cookie. I'm going to call him Cookie. He stumbled across a Chinese immigrant, and they're in the northwestern part of the uh, USA, or whatever the country is called back then. Um, I think, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a historian. So they became great friends. Uh, the Chinese man is called King Lu, so Cookie is called Cookie because he's good at baking. So he decided to bake these oily cakes these deep fried cakes and decided to make a business out of it and most of it is actually uh, king lu's idea he's the businessman and cookie is the cook so th they decided to make uh, an entire business out of it you know by making these oily cakes you know and uh, here's the thing if you want to make these cakes or these biscuits you need milk and in the entire village, which is really poor, by the way, there's only one cow. And the cow is owned by uh, Toby Jones, uh, who's uh, Toby Jones's character, uh, Captain Factor. And he is an aristocrat. He's a very arrogant Brit. Even though if they were found by Captain Factor and his men, they would probably be killed because Captain Factor is a horrible terrifying person who is very powerful so that's pretty much the movie now uh yeah this movie is not gonna be everyone's cup of tea it's extremely slow paced and i've seen a handful of really 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 slow paced movies in my life before like you know dog tooth roma under the skin amour melancholia uh, yeah, there are just many, many slow, slow, slow movies out there, including this one. So if you're into fast-paced movies, in fact, if you're into regular-paced movies, you're going to be bored out of your mind when you're watching this one, because the majority of the movie is where nothing happens, but we sort of see the lifestyle of uh, poor Americans in the 1820s, you know, uh, yeah, and, uh, that's pretty much just it. Now, uh, one thing I really like about this movie, or, or at least one standout feature of this movie is that it is very realistic. Stay hydrated, kids. Um, yeah, lately I've been trying to sort of categorize art films into two categories. One is realism and one is expressionism. And I'm not necessarily talking about, you know, Italian neorealism or German expressionism. I'm talking about there are art films that are more realistic in that they're using the plainest of camera shots, camera angles and lighting as possible, lots of wides. Uh, not many crazy camera movements, and then we have expressionism, which is basically the opposite of that, because all the camera movements, all the camera angles, the lighting, the edits, the cinematography, the composition of the frame, they're all very eccentric and, and done for the sole purpose of expressing a, 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 a sort of emotion or, or tone or atmosphere in the movie. So, uh, yeah, you know, talk about 
more eccentric filmmakers nowadays, like Wes Anderson, Yorgos Landimos, Gaspar Noé. They are more on the expressionist side of things, and then we have the realistic side of things. You know, talk about Luca Guadagnino, and uh, we have First Cow as well, which is really realistic and good. Damn, I, I love, I love a a good, realistic, accurate period piece. I just really love that idea. And this movie does feel really realistic to me, you know, down to the costumes, the production, the whole thing feels really real. Though, there's one aspect of the movie that I'm like, okay, this is definitely not real, and that's the language part. And I know it's really difficult to emulate, you know, the English language being spoken by Americans in the 1820s, um, but uh, yeah, after watching The Lighthouse, you know, I, I'm, um, I, you know, I, I really want to watch another movie that has accurately historical language being used. But I'm still fine with this one. Another thing is uh, we also have a four to three aspect ratio, and the cinematography again very clean, very beautiful. Though there are a few shots in the movie that's super dark. I can't see anything. Please add some lighting. Um, but uh, yeah, also very quiet movie. The soundtrack isn't really all that great. And a bulk of the movie is pretty much quiet, even in the most intense scenes. Again, a majority of the movie is like basically nothing happens. And then the last third of the movie is where something starts happening. And it's like, oh, oh no, you know, don't get caught by Captain Factor while milking the only cow in the village. And, uh, yeah, but at the end, the ending didn't hit me quite as hard. Um, it's, I mean, yeah, it's a resolve nonetheless, but it's just kind of a forgettable ending, honestly. And I don't know what kind of filmmaker would, because this movie is not original, it's actually adapted from a novel, and I don't know what kind of filmmaker would go, damn, I can make a movie out of this after reading a novel like this, because it's, it's, neither that psychological or or that um, entertaining of a story really. Though I really love uh, one thing about this movie is that uh, usually, especially in big Hollywood movies, there is if there is an Asian American character or Asian character, the Asian would be the quiet one, would be the nerdy one. But in this movie, the Asian uh, King Lou is the more outspoken one, the more daring one, the more bold one, which is really refreshing to see. And uh, yeah, another good thing about this movie is that it makes me hungry for some oily cakes, for some for some deep fried cake batter. Uh, with honey and, and, and maybe bits of cinnamon on top. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I I like that this movie also tries to tackle topics like, you know, capitalism and the American dream. There are several dialogues where the two main characters are discussing, oh, what, what, what do you want to do after this whole cake business? And King Lu wants to open a farm and then cookie wants to run like a bakery but it's all talk they want to make money at the end of the day and that's pretty much the american dream also back in the 1820s um um there are still uh, again i'm not a historian but there's still people who are aristocrats you know they want a king they want a monarch and there are people who's like no let's let's do things uh let's run on capitalism completely uh, sure, we'll have a leader, we'll have a president, but at the end of the day, we earn what we work for, and this mentality is sort of new back then. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess at the end, that's just my thoughts on this movie. I think it's pretty good, though I wouldn't say it's one of the more memorable watches I've experienced this year. Uh, yeah, I'm saying First Cow is... A nice try, and I'm giving it a light to decent 7 out of 10. So, have you watched First Cow? From 1 to 10, how much did you rate it? Like if you like it, and subscribe if you want more. And thanks for watching. I will be watching Mank, if it's out. The Five Bloods, Wolf Walker. If, oh, there's a Danish film called uh, Truk. I uh, really want to watch that, and um, Pieces of a Woman, though I, I know I'll never be able to watch it until 2021. Demon Slayer as well, but then again, I'll never be able to watch it until 2021.